Welcome back. We are still in chapter three. We're doing ionic compounds for one atom ions, monoatomic ions. That's page 55 through 57, exercise 3G. And there's some stuff that you always have to remember. This is basically our methodology. Remember, first job is to find the ion charges first. And then you have to remember how we make ionic compounds. Every ionic compound has a zero net charge, okay, which means you add up all the ions and it has to equal zero. Every ionic compound has one type of cation, and that's the first one in the formula, and one type of anion, that's always the second. And then we always have to use the smallest ratio of cations to anions for the formula to be correct. Now you're going to encounter a a term that you may not be familiar with, it's called a formula unit, but it's real simple. It's just an ionic compounds formula. That's all. So when you think of formula unit, think of an ionic compound. All right, so how do we go about our business? Well, the question that will be asked is, what is the formula unit of the ionic compound formed from? And then we're going to give you stuff and your job is to look at what we have and see what the ionic compound is that has a zero net charge with one type of cation and one type of anion that's the smallest ratio. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are your six different examples. We're going to go through them one at a time. Your job is to write them down, give it a try, Hit pause and then see what it looks like when we come back. All right, pause. Okay, we're back. Let's take a look. First things first, we figure out the charges on the ions. Remember, this is a group 1A, so it shouldn't take you very long to recognize that sodium wants to make a plus 1 cation. If that's an issue with you, go back to 3E and 3 F because you have to be good at that before you can be good at 3G. BR is in group 7A. 7A. So if it's 7A, it wants to add 1 to make a BR minus 1. Well, it's pretty clear that if you have a sodium plus 1 and a BR minus 1, the 1 apiece added together will have a 0 charge. And so the formula for this compound is NABR because 1 plus 1 and 1 minus 1 adds up to 0. Cations first, anions second. Done! All right, that's pretty simple. Let's try this guy. Potassium, as you can see, get it out of the shine there. Potassium is in the same group as sodium, so it's 1A again, so it also wants to make a plus one charge, but nitrogen is in group 5A, so therefore it's going to want to make a minus three anion. All right, so a plus one and a minus three. We have to have this end up equaling zero charge, right? It has to add up to zero. So if we had one K with one N, that's a plus 1 and a minus 3, the whole thing would be a minus 2 charge, right? And that won't work, because you have to have a zero charge. I think it's pretty clear you need three potassium plus 1s combined with one nitrogen minus 3 to have it add up to zero, right? So how would you write the formula if you have 3K plus 1s plus 1 N minus 3? Well, the way you have to do that is say there's three K's for every one nitrogen. This is the way we write formulas. And this is really, really important. I haven't written this down, and I'm not going to write it down, but you have to remember this. Ionic compounds don't show their charges, but individual ions must show their charges. Because if you don't put a charge on the individual ion, it'll look like it's an element but we don't stick charges on compounds because it can get confusing and we don't need to 
because looking at the compound, we can figure out what the charges are. In fact, that's going to be the next exercise, or one of the next ones. Fair enough? Three potassiums combined with one nitrogen to make this neutral ionic compound. Okay, let's try this guy. Calcium likes to make a plus two charge because it's in group 2A. Oxygen is in group 6A. So it wants to add two electrons to make a minus two. Well, these even out, right? Some people have learned this, where you switch charges. But if you wrote this, you'd be wrong. Why? Use the smallest ratio of cations to anions. Think about it. If you have one calcium that wants to lose two electrons, and one oxygen that wants to gain two, the calcium holds out his two, the oxygen grabs the two, and they're done. So the ratio is actually one to one. Cation first, anion second. All right? Let's try again. D. Aluminum likes to make a plus three charge, right? Fluorine likes to make a minus one, because this is in group 3A, and this is in group 7A. you got to be good at that. you got to be quick with it. If you're not, that's what 3E and 3F practice problems allow you to do. Okay, so what's the ratio here? How do we have to even out the charge? Well, you need 3F minus 1s, right? The aluminum's giving away 3 electrons. The fluorine's taking 1 electron at a time. So you need 3 fluorines to take all 3 electrons. How do we write that formula? this, not that, and not that. All of those are incorrect. That's the way we indicate charges uh, on ions, and that's the way we indicate formula units or ionic compound formulas. All right, two more to go real quick. Lithium is in the same group as sodium and potassium, so it likes to make a plus one charge. Sulfur is in the same group as oxygen, so it likes to make a minus two. Don't we need two of the plus ones to even out the one of the minus two? Sure. So how do we write that formula? Lithium two says two lithiums. Sulfur one means one sulfur. So there's two lithium ions for every one sulfur anion in this ionic compound. Okay, one more to go. Magnesium is in group 2A, so it likes to make a plus 2 charge. Chlorine is in group 7A, so it likes to make a minus 1 charge. How do we do that ratio? Well, for every one of these, you need two of those. MgCl2. Okay. Um, Real fast. Let's do one more quick one. Ready? Here we go. AL and S. How will we do AL and S? AL likes to be a plus three. Sulfur likes to be a minus two. How do we even out the charges here? Well, if we did AL and S, that would be a plus one charge. That won't work if the ratio is one to one. Basically what you have to do is find the least common multiple. And that's six. Can you see where you need two plus threes plus three minus twos to have the charge even out? How would that work? That's my dog. How would that work? Well, you need two aluminums, both of which are plus three, and three sulfurs, all of which are minus two. And how do we write that formula? Two aluminums and three sulfurs. Or, you can also look at this as the two and the three switch. Whichever way, that's the right answer.
practice these out it's all from exercise 3G and that's how you get better at this. It's an important skill so have at it.